Hello and welcome to this Java project series by TAP Academy. The aim of this series is to help you take all the theoretical knowledge about the concepts you have learnt in class and apply it practically by building something. Please understand the purest joy which you can derive from software development is by creating projects. Taking an idea, creating it from scratch and finally seeing your project come to life is one of the best moments in any software engineer's life. Through this series, we are going to be covering n number of projects in Java and the aim of this series is to 1. Take your knowledge up by a level. 2nd. Create so many mini and major projects which you can apply on your resume and most importantly make you fall in love with the process of coding and development. So what are we really waiting for? Let's get started with today's topic and today my dear friends we are going to code our first mini project in Java which is creating a tic-tac-toe game. I am sure this is one game which all of us have played in our life be it scribbling on the last page of our books in school or in colleges. This is a favorite game of all the people and definitely every one of us would have at least played this game once in our life. But how do you bring such a game to life in Java? Well, my friends, in order to bring this concept to life in Java, you just need some core Java concepts such as arrays, such as looping, such as using your if-else conditions, such as using classes, objects and inheritance. My friends, using all these concepts, you can create an amazing tic-tac-toe game. Now, let me quickly show you what the final output of this game is going to look like. Just have a look. Now let us begin and try to understand how we would go about creating this tic-tac-toe program. Now it's very simple friends. First of all, in tic-tac-toe you will have a 3 cross 3 board, right? 3 rows, every row will have 3 columns. So it's a 3 cross 3 board. Now because we are programmers, I am going to call this as 0th row, 1st row, 2nd row, 0th column, 1st column, 2nd column, alright? Now please understand, always in tic-tac-toe there is going to be two players, alright? So let us assume that the first player is going to be X. Then the second player is obviously going to be O. Or you will understand. Now next the player, maybe I will put X here, O will put here, then I am going to put probably X here and if I do this, I will be putting O here and clearly you can see I have now 1. I hope you will understand. So basically the question now is, how do we create this board in Java? Well, it's very simple friends. Now I'm just going to remove this X, O and all of this. Those of you who have been learning arrays, just look at this and tell me, what kind of an array does this look like to you? Well, if I just look at it, I will say that, sir, this is a two-dimensional array which has three rows and every row has three columns. So, it's a two-dimensional array. Wonderful. It is a two-dimensional array which is storing what? Which is storing what, if you ask me, my friend, these x or this O, what are they? These are characters. X is a character on your keyboard. O is a character on your keyboard. 
which means it is a two dimensional array which has three rows and every row has three columns which ultimately is going to be able to store characters and the two characters we will be storing is either x or o would you agree with me keeping this at the back of our mind let us try to go and just create one board in java let's do this much okay so watch it i am going to go to eclipse now in eclipse for the time being i'll just keep this aside i will start a new java project I will call this new Java project as probably a tic-tac-toe game like that. Okay, you cannot see those steps of creating project, but I think by now all of your experts, you know how to create it. So tic-tac-toe game I have created. I will right click, there I will create a new class. I'll call this class as probably launch game class. I'll just call this class as launch game. Again, you can't see the prompt, but most certainly it is there. Okay, launch game, I will call it as. Wonderful. So this is my class called as launch game. I will maximize this and uh, just remove that package explorer. Just control M. Okay, wonderful. This is my launch game. Am I clear? Now watch it. I'll go above this launch game. This launch game has my main method. So let's ignore that. Now I'll create a class. I'll call this class as the tic-tac-toe class in camel case. Tic-tac-toe. I'll call it a stick tac toe. Wonderful. Now, how do I create this board? Well, I told you it is nothing but a two dimensional array of characters. Correct? So see what I will do. I will now create a character array. A two dimensional array of characters. A two dimensional array of characters. Don't leave that space. It is a two dimensional array of characters. Am I create? What is this? I'll call this two dimensional array of characters as board. I'll call it as board. I'll put semicolon. I hope you're able to think. Now the thing is, obviously, those of you who are revising know that I am not doing uh, instantiation here. What I've done is I've just declared one variable called as board, which is nothing but a reference to a two dimensional array of characters. But even now the array is not ready. Now, when will you create the arrays? All of you know, class does not exist in reality. What exists in reality are objects of the class. So what I will do is, when somebody creates an object of tic-tac-toe class, during object creation itself, that initialization should happen. And how do you initialize an object during object creation? If you ask me, that is where we use the concept of a constructor. So watch it, press enter. I'll tell public. Constructor does not have a return type. I will call it as tic-tac-toe. Okay, name is same as that of the class. Tic-tac-toe like this. Inside that, the moment somebody calls the constructor, I will now tell new. I will tell char. I want to create a new integer which can store characters. What is the dimensionality? Two dimensional. So, I will put two pairs of brackets. Very good. First pair is row, second pair is columns. Please look at this and tell me how many rows friends? Three rows. So I will tell three. Next, every row has how many columns friends? Three columns. And you know this is a regular array where every row has equal number of columns. Am I clear? Now to this I want to give a reference. Now that reference assignment I will tell. What is the reference? That reference only is what I have created here called as board. How people understand? So the moment somebody creates an object, constructor gets called, constructor will create a three cross three array and it is going to give it as board. Am I clear till here? Wonderful. All right. So now you guys understood till here. Please understand when you create a character array, which has three rows, every row has three columns. You know, arrays are objects in Java and objects are automatically initialized with default values. Now the question is, what is the default value of a character? Please understand the default value of a character is slash u followed by four zeros. Slash u means Unicode and everybody knows Java follows Unicode format. Again, I'm not going to go into the depth. If you have any doubts regarding it, please go listen to my data types videos. Clarity will come. Now, I don't want, now, first of all, what is this slash u followed by four zeros? If you ask me, this is actually nothing but a null character. This is actually nothing but a null character. I hope you're able to understand. 
now i don't want null characters to be uh, present within my board i want initially it should have spaces everywhere space 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 later i will replace a space with either x or an o so this is not what i need so what i need to do is i need to initialize my board with spaces now how are we going to do that my friends that is really really easy try to understand i'll come outside the constructor and create void init board i will create a method called as init board am i clear inside this initialize board very simple i am going to iterate over this array i am going to iterate over this array and i am going to basically fill spaces now you know how to iterate over a two dimensional array assign i to take care of rows assign j to take care of columns so watch it for int i equal to 0 next i will tell i less than you know if you want the number of rows in a two dimensional array the way to get it is board dot length name of it is board board dot length am i clear one by one i will go forward i plus plus like this one by one i will go forward next what are you going to do if you ask me next inside this please understand now it's a turn for columns columns means j for int j equal to 0 okay j less than you know in a particular row if you want the number of columns the short way or the general way of writing is board of i that is array's name i dot length how you should read it is if i is 0 board of 0 dot length will give you number of columns if i is 1 board of 1 dot length will give you the number of columns one by one j should move forward so i will tell j plus plus great inside that scroll down a little bit i will now initialize so how will you initialize board of i j board of i j board of i j board of i j correct uh, to this i will assign empty character like this i'll assign an empty character semicolon am i clear till here so every cell in my array will get placed with empty characters so i've initialized my board now don't you think friends the moment you create the board itself initialization should happen the moment you create a board next thing is initialization should happen so what i will do is within the constructor i am going to come press enter and i am just going to tell uh, after creating board next i will automatically call initialize board so that it gets initialized so i will just tell initialize board init board like this am i clear till here semicolon i hope till here all of you have understood great which means so far what have we done is we have basically created a class called as tic to we uh, tic tac to we created a two dimensional array called as board within the constructor the moment somebody creates an object you will create a new three a two dimensional character array with three rows and every row having three columns give it the reference called as board next initialize the board with all spaces now the thing is if this board should be visible on screen we have to display it on screen now how are we going to display it on screen very simple come down i am next coming out and creating one more method i'll call it as display mode method display board method void display board method inside the display board method i'm going to come and basically what i'm going to do is i need to display this board now how are we going to display simple what i will do is i'll copy this entire loop because looping has to be done i will paste it whatever is inside i will remove whatever is inside i will remove okay now let me just reduce the size of this board and keep it so that it is more visible to you okay now you must think about it now if i want to display an empty board if i had to display this empty board how would i display first of all i want one line to come in the top so what i will do is before i start with any rows before i start with first row second row third row one line should come on top so what i will do is system dot out dot print ln within double quotes i'll keep putting that hyphens a series of hyphens within double quotes like this one series of hyphens i will put am i clear next i will enter a row inside a row i need to print columns correct but before i print the columns i need this one line to come now how are we going to get this line to come if you ask me that is very simple here as soon as i enter a row as soon as i enter a row 
system dot out dot print not print ln print because cursor should be on the same line this is similar to what you guys have learned in pattern programming how are you able to understand now within double quotes i am going to put one pipe am i clear till here next inside the columns now i am coming to the columns j means columns first i need to print whatever is there so watch it system dot out dot print now how to print whatever is there board of i j board of i j clear till here to this i will attach see print space after that one more pipe should come so to this i will attach one pipe i will put left side one space right side one space i will leave so that it looks good am i clear till here i hope all of you understood this is this clear to each and every one of you oh yes sir this is great sir we understood next what next what means now it will print space pipe print space pipe print say space pipe then cursor should come to the next row next row means next line how to bring cursor to the next line ln print ln so system dot out dot print ln cursor will come to the next line great now now please understand after or after cursor comes to the next line don't you think before i print the next set of things i need to first print one uh, line how are able to understand so what i'm going to do is i'll copy this see this line should come one more line should come so what i'll do is i'll copy this and paste it after that after that let it repeat am i clear till here friends oh correct sir now if i do this much will a board really come let's have a look okay so i'll go down to the main method because execution means main method is required class is imaginary object is real hence i'm going to create an object of the tic tac toe class new tic tac toe and i will give this a reference i will call it as t i will call this as t okay and uh, give it put semicolon after which next what i will do is please understand the moment you create an object constructor gets called moment the constructor gets called go on top constructor inside it is going to create a new array give it a reference called as board now we will understand call initialize board initialize board is going to fill it with spaces next i have to call display board so please understand come down i am going to now tell t dot display board like this display board if in case i were to now execute it one can clearly notice this is how it looks now some adjustments is required for example this is now going out so 1 2 3 4 dashes i will remove then it will become symmetrical watch it scroll on top from here also four dashes i will remove here also four dashes i will remove. now if in case i were to go and execute it 100% you can see doesn't this look like a three cross three board my dear friends i hope you are able to understand now i can put an x i can put an o i can put an x i can put an o i can do all that but uh, somewhere here little bit alignment is gone so what we can do is after printing this pipe we can leave one space so watch it this is that pipe here i leave a space now if in case i were to just execute it clearly you can notice it looks much better now i'll just add one extra dash in both places so i'll just go here put one extra dash here put one extra dash here and if in case i were to execute it i think now it looks like a proper symmetrical board where i can put x i can put o i can put x i can put o and stuff like that yes or no so i think you got the idea of how to create the board now naturally we need to think about different other functionalities for example how to place an x how to place an o right player 1 Player two, I hope you will understand. Next, how to check for a win? Now, win can happen in terms of uh, rows. Win can happen in terms of columns. Win can happen diagonally also. So, how are we going to check for all this and more? Is what we will look at next. All right. Now, the question is, how can we place a mark on this board? Because I should be able to place 
either an X or I should be able to place a O or I should be able to place a X. It doesn't matter X or O, whatever I'm placing. How do you place a mark? So there are two marks, either an X or an O. How do you place it? For this, we need to create a function or a method called as place mark. Now, think about it. To Java, if I have to tell, okay, Java, you place O here. I can't tell here to Java. Now, this is an array. In this array, this cell, this cell, please understand, it has a certain coordinate. What is the coordinate if you ask me? This is nothing but first row, first column. Are you able to understand? Or board of 1, 1. So, I need to tell the row number. I need to tell the column number. Only then Java can place. Not only should I tell row and column. Now, I should also tell which is the mark. Is it X or is it O? Are you able to understand? Now, how do we do this is the question. Very simple. Let me take you to the code. Please observe. I will go on top. So, init board is ready. I will just minimize it. Display board is ready. I will just minimize it. Next, I will come down and create void. Place mark. Name of the method is called as place mark. Now, what will this accept? What will this accept? It is going to accept three parameters. First is the number of the row, which is nothing but an integer. Int row. <coughs> Comma. Next, int column. Correct? Next, comma, mark. What is this mark? Mark is a character. So, see, char type mark. Because x is also character, o is also character. Now, come inside. You have put brackets two times. Undo it. Just undo. Now, inside this, please try to understand what I will do. Now, it's very simple. All I am going to do is, I need to take this mark, place it at this row and column. That is very simple. Board of put two brackets. Now, the first bracket is nothing but row. So, whatever is there in row, I will pass. The second bracket is column. Whatever is there in column, I will pass. Do one thing, just call it as col enough. Col. Here also remove. Um. Am I clear? To this, I will assign. What to assign friends? Whatever is there inside mark. That's it. This is how you place a mark. If you want to see this in action, then watch it come down. First, I will display the board. After displaying the board, now t dot place mark. T dot place mark. Am I clear? First, I will tell, maybe I want to place a mark here. 0, 0. So, row 0, column 0. Now, come to the mark. Character means single quotes. Within single quotes, I want to put x. Am I clear? Now, after placing x, again you should display the board. Yes, obviously if you don't display, you can't see. So, again I will call display board. T dot display board. Great. Now, if in case I were to just go and execute, clearly one can notice x got placed. Now, you may ask sir, why did one extra this come? So, that is for the previous board. Scroll on top. Yeah. This is one board, this is another board. So, don't get confused. So, this was the empty board. Now, X has got placed. So, do you see how to place it? Go back. Now, next what I am going to do is, I will just go here and uh, probably do one thing. Just copy this place mark, paste it again. Below that, just place it. And I will tell in 2, 1, in 2, 1, second row, first uh, column, I want to place O. And if in case I were to now execute, clearly one can notice X and O. So, this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. So, 2, 1 because 0 column, first column, 2, 1. So, now you understood how to place the particular uh, mark. Now, try to understand friends, what if I told in 5, 1 put O. If in case I were to now execute, Clearly, you can see it results in an exception. Make it full. It results in an exception. Array index out of bounds exception. Because, please understand, how, how many rows are there? 0, 1, 2. You have told 3, 4, 5. Do you have such a row? No, obviously. So, the index is out of the boundary of the array. Which means, whenever you place a mark, it is very important to first check 
whether the coordinates that you are giving for the mark is within the boundary of the array or not or such problems will come. Correct? How do we do that? Go back. Try to understand this. This is very simple. Please go forward. Directly I will not place the mark. First I will check whether this row or column is valid or not. So for that just uh, cut this line. If in case. First I will write condition for valid row. So what is the boundary for valid row? 0 to 2. That is the valid boundary. 0 to 2. Correct? So I will tell if in case row is it greater than or equal to 0? And is it is row lesser than or equal to 2? That is the boundary. Greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2. How do you understand? Okay. And and now coming to columns. What is the valid columns? Again 0 to 2 only. So column is it greater than or equal to 0? And is it lesser than or equal to 2? I hope this condition is clear. And obviously you need and because not only row should be true, even column should be true. I hope you will understand. Great. If that is the case, whatever I have cut, I will paste. Else, else, I am going to tell invalid input. Sys out, invalid input. Invalid input. Am I clear? Now, if in case or invalid position you put, that will be better. Invalid position. Now, if in case I were to execute, clearly one can see it is going to tell invalid position. And when I display the board, it did not print that. Scroll down as you can hear. So, you can see 0, 0 got placed. 5, 1, it told invalid position. And when I displayed the board, it has not placed it. How people understand. So, I hope all of you understood how to place the mark as well. Now, you have placed marks. Now, try to understand one thing friends. Assume, assume, just uh, 0, 0, I have placed x. Next, let us assume in 1, 1, 1, 1, I have placed o. Again, next, duplicate that line. In 2, 0. In 2, 0, I have placed x again. 2, 0, I have placed x again. Correct? Next, duplicate that line. Now, let us assume in, uh, you know, maybe 0, uh, 2, I have placed a o. In 0, 2, I have placed an o. Correct? Now, in the next line, in maybe... Z 1, 0, I will place an x. In 1, 0, I will place an x. Now, clearly you can see, first player has won the game. First player has won the game. I will able to understand. Now, if in case I just execute my program, clearly one can notice that 100% these are the positions. First player has won the game. Now, obviously, every time somebody places a mark, you have to also check whether or not that person has won the game or not. Which means now we must write the logic to check for win conditions. I hope you will understand. Win condition can be column, win condition can be rows, win conditions can be diagonals. How do we write code for this? Let's explore. Now, I have a board here in front of me where you can see there has been a win condition along the columns or one more scenario could be a win condition around the columns like this. One more could be a win condition along the columns like this. Yes. So it's very important that we check column wise win conditions. Now, how do you check column by spin condition? It's very simple. Now, let's think about it step by step. Now, how do we check for this condition? First of all, look at this. This basically is nothing but my board. Correct? Board of first row is 0. Row is 0. Next, column is 0. Correct? This should be equal to Board of 
1, 0. So, watch it. I am just writing like this. Board of zero zero this should be equal to board of one zero one zero and then board of one zero board of one zero should be equal to board of two zero should be equal to board of 2, 0. I hope all of you understood. So, if these two conditions are satisfied, where board of 0, 0 is equal to 1, 0, these two are equal, and board of 1, 0 is equal to 2, 0, which means these two are equal, then I can say there is a column win condition. Correct? Now, in general, if I have to write, what you are able to notice is, in the first uh, thing, 0, 0, 0, 0. What is this 0, 0? Is nothing but J value. Which means, can I replace this 0, this 0, this 0, this 0 in general with J? In general with J? I can replace. I hope you will understand. Now, please understand. Look at this. Now, what is J? 0. Okay. So, 0, 0. Is it equal to uh, 1, 0? Yes. Next, look at it. 1, what is J value? 0. Is equal to 2, 0. Is it equal? Yes. It works. So, it works for the first column. Now, come to the second column. See here. 0. Now, assume J is 1. That is, we are in the second column. Now look at it. 0. What is J value? 1. So 0, 1 is equal to 1. What is the J value? 1. Again, 1. What is the J value here? 1. Again, 2. What is the J value here? 1. Now let us assume J becomes 2. Even then it becomes 0, 2. Is it equal to 1, 2? Next is 1, 2 equal to 2, 2. Correctly it works. It will check for these two. They will check for these two. How do you understand? So, in general, if I were to put this inside one if condition, then this is my condition for a column win. I think everybody would agree, this is my condition for a column win. How are we will understand. How are we going to write this as code? Let me show you. So, watch it. What I am going to do is, I will go on top and I will create a function void. Check column win. Check column win. Inside that, I am just going to write the condition and the condition is simple. First of all, now you must think how to write this condition. Okay. Now, this condition, I am just placing it below here so that you can see it. Now, what I want you to understand is this 0, 1, 1, 2. 0, 1, 1, 2 is fixed for all columns. But what is changing is J value. J should first be 0, then it should become 1, then it should become 2. So, common sense tells me, if I can start a loop which starts from 0 and goes to the last column, then I can write this logic which will check for every column. Yes or no? Because row values are fixed. 0, 1, 1, 2 is fixed. 0, 1, 1, 2. Whether it is the first column, second column, three, eight, one, 0, 1, 1, 2. 0, 1, 1, 2. Fixed. What is changing is J. So, I will write a loop which iterates over J. Iterates over columns. For int uh, J starting from 0. Maximum J should go till 2. J less than equal to 2. And we can directly write less than equal to 2 because we know that tic-tac-toe means it is definitely going to be a 3 cross 3 board only. So, the last index is always going to be 2. J plus plus. Inside that I will go and put this condition if in case board of 0 J value is it equal to board of 1 rho is 1 and whatever is the J value. Okay. Next, and, and, next, reduce the size a little bit. Yes. Next, uh, copy this entire condition, 
paste it again. Next 0 1 next you should check for 1 2 1 and 2 understood again whatever the j value you can press enter after that and no 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 and next again copy that entire condition entire condition you copy ok next uh, you checked for 0 1 and you checked if it is equal to uh, yeah you checked if 0 basically row 0 row 1 row 1 row 2 correct that is it that that is pretty much the only two conditions no need for that extra thing please remove it. that is not required ok my mistake these are the only two conditions come inside if this condition matches I want to tell yes you are 1 now how can a function return yes or no yes means true no means false yeah correct so it will return what to return is a true value have okay, to answer now let us assume i uh, j started from 0 then went to 1 then went to 2 and nowhere you found the condition to be true so you will come outside the loop if you come outside the loop and not even once condition satisfied it means nobody won column wise hence you should tell yeah column wise nobody won how to tell return false return false and obviously if you are returning true and false the return type should never be void it has to be boolean because true and false is nothing but boolean and again if these concepts are not clear to you my friends please go and make sure you are re-watching the content of core java because these are fundamental concepts the project series is about application of the concept i hope everybody understood till here wonderful now let us uh, try this out so go down so now what I am going to do is very simple. I am going to put a condition here. Okay. So delete these three. Uh, okay. Okay. That's fine. Uh, now what I am going to do is see let us let us just quickly play one game here. Assume first I will put x here. Okay. So that is 0 0. Then I will put uh, probably o in the center that is 1 1 okay then i'm going to put x in 2 0 correct then i'm going to put o in uh, uh, maybe here which is nothing but 0 2 then i'm putting x in 1 0 that is what has happened here now i will display the board correct after displaying the board now i'm going to check whether there is a win so watch it i'm just going to tell system dot out dot print because whatever it returns i just want to print two or false t dot check column win check column win and now if in case i were to go and i were to execute it clearly you can notice yes true column wise you have one our people understand now for example uh, i am going to uh, do one thing uh, probably uh, let us change the coordinates like this wherein i am going to remove all this so accordingly change will happen in the code I put x here, okay. Next, I put o here. Next, I put x here. So, in 2, 2, right. Next, I put o here. Next, I put uh, so x, uh, yeah, o is in 0, 1. Next, I put x here in 0, 2, okay. Next, I will put o here. Next, I will put O here in uh, 2, 1, in 2, 1. So, now obviously there is again a win condition friends. Now, let us see whether it tells true or false. And if in case I were to see, obviously it tells yes, the condition is 100% true column by zero. So, I hope everybody understood how to check for column win condition. Naturally, if there is going to be a column win condition, there is also going to be a row win condition, there is also going to be a diagonal win condition. And how to code that? Let us explore. Now it is time for us to look at row win conditions. As you can see, this is also a row win, this is also a row win, this is also a row win. Now how does one check for row win? It is very simple. Row wise you need to check. For example, if I take the first row, the first element should be equal to the second element. The second element should be equal to the third element. Then obviously third element will be equal to the first element only. Similarly, check this with this. Then check this 
with this. Then check this with this. Then check this with this. I think this is clear to everybody. Now, how do we write a condition for this? So, I am just pasting this here so that it becomes easy for us to write. Now, let us start with the first row. Row means I. So, watch it. This element should be equal to this element. Now, how can I write that? Very simple. First of all, you know the row is 0. 0, 0 should be equal to 0, 1. Correct? That is these two elements. Then, obviously, next one is 0, 1 should be equal to 0, 2. That is nothing but these two elements. I hope everybody understood this condition. Both and, because this also should be true, this also should be true. Next, obviously, come to the next row. I is 1. 1, 0, 1, 1. That is these two. Next, 1, 1 should be equal to 1, 2. That is nothing but these two. Next, obviously, we can have the next row. I is 2. 2, 0 should be equal to 2, 1. And obviously, next 2, 1 should be equal to 2, 2. First, we compared these two elements. Next, we compared these two elements. I think everybody understood this clearly. Now, I am just zooming it a little bit for you so that you understand it better. Am I clear? Now, we need to create a generalization. Assume there was a loop where i starts from 0. Assume there was a loop where i starts from 0. Then goes to 1, then goes to 2. How you will understand? Because row wise you have to check. Now, if you notice, look at the columns. Okay, 0, 1, 1, 2. 0, 1, 1, 2. Similarly, 0, 1, 1, 2. So, the column values are always fixed. But what is changing is rows. 0 became 1, became 2. 0 became 1, became 2. 0 became 1, became 2. So, this 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Whatever is there in the first bracket is nothing but the number of the row. And that is changing. And the number of the row is handled by whom now, friends? I. Which means, wouldn't you agree in general, all these fellows, that is the row numbers, in general, I can now call it as I, 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 and I's everywhere. Okay. This also should be removed. I will call it as I's. Here also, I, I and I. I think everybody can understand. Which means, you don't have to repeat this three times, friends. Please understand. Only once you can tell. If I is 0, then 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 2. If I becomes 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2. If I becomes 2, accordingly it changes. I hope you will understand. Hence, I hope the condition is clear to everybody. Let's have a look. So, if I go back to my program, I am now going to create one more function. Again, boolean, check row win because it has to either tell me true or it has to tell me false. Great. Next, inside this, I am going to go and I am going to write, run a loop because obviously, we have to uh, run it on this. If you remember, we have to run it on this and I am just going to remove this for the time being. Okay. Let me just remove this, all this for the time being. Great. Now, obviously, we have to run a loop where i starts from 0. So, that is what I am going to do. For int i starting from 0. Next, it should go till 2, i less than equal to 2, i plus plus. Inside this, I am going to go and I am going to tell uh, basically, I uh, will write that condition if in case. Okay, Watch it. Board of i row, whichever row. Columns are fixed. 0th column, is it equal to, is it equal to board of, board of. Again, row is whatever is i. Next, next element, column is fixed, 1. 
Okay, that is the first one. You compared these two. Next, these two. So, and I will put, copy this entire condition, press enter and paste it. So, that it comes in the next line. Uh, I'm just going to press enter and I'm going to paste it. And there I will, I is fixed, but this will become one. This will become two because one and two. Clear till here, friends. If this condition is satisfied, return true because row wise you have one. Return true. Wonderful. Next, if the entire first row you check, second row you check, third row you check, not even once this condition became true. Now you came outside the loop. It means nobody has one row wise. So return false. I think you have understood this without a single doubt. Am I clear till here? I hope everybody has understood. Okay, sir. Great. We have understood. Next, what should we do? You may ask. Now, let's check whether this works. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to come down. And what I will do is, uh, let us assume. So, I'm just going to play a game. Uh, and accordingly, I will change the coordinates. Watch it. First, I'm going to put one X here. Okay. So, that is already fixed. Next, I'm going to put one O here. So, that will be uh, 1, 1. 1, 0, correct. Okay. Next, I am going to be putting an X here. So, that is uh, o, 0, 1. Very good. Next, I am going to be putting uh, O here. Okay. So, that is 0, 1. Next, I am going to be putting an X here. Okay. So, that is nothing but 0, 2. Correct. Remove the last line because the moment you do this, now everybody knows you have 1 like this. Am I clear till here? So now when I display board, I don't, I will check column win also. Next line, system.out.println. I will check, uh, okay, do one thing, remove the column win. We'll check directly for row win, okay? I will just call this function, check row win. Check row win. Okay, let's see whether it works. Now, if in case I were to execute, clearly you can see true. Yes, row wise we have one. Of course, it will work here also, it will work here also. 100% logic will work. There is no doubt about it. So, now we have seen how to write the logic to check for a row win. Now, the only other win condition is diagonally and let's have a look at how we can write the logic for that. Now, the last remaining part is to check for a diagonal win. And my dear friends, this is the uh, scenario where diagonally there are win conditions. So, you can either win like this or you can win like this. And if you look at it, this is a very straightforward condition because diagonal win is fixed. 0, 0, it should be equal to 1, 1, it should be equal to 2, 2. That's it. Then this way. This way diagonally, if you have to check, then 0, 2 should be equal to 1, 1, should be equal to 2, 0. So it's a direct hard coded condition. You just have to write the condition as it is. Let's go and quickly code it. So watch it. I'm just going to go and create a Boolean function, which I'm going to call it as check diag win in short diagonal uh, capital D you put check diagonal win because you have to follow camel conventions in Java. Inside that I'm going to go and directly I will just put one condition if in case. Okay. What is the condition? Board off. Okay. First 0, 0. Is it equal to? Is it equal to? Board off. Board off. Uh, next is, uh, you know, uh, 1, 1, that is this one. Okay, press enter. Uh, because there is no space, I am just pressing enter and typing. Next, board off. 1, 1. So, I will put uh, uh, and, obviously, you know, this also should be equal, this also should be equal. Board off, I will put 1, 1, is it equal to 2, 2? 1, 1, is it equal to 2, 2? That is one diagonal, okay. Now press enter. Please try to understand. That is one condition. Or, or, or diagonal condition can be like this also. Everybody will understand. So now I will copy this entire code, paste it once more. Only the coordinates we need to change. So if in case I were to paste it, then first of all, this will be 0, 2, this one. Next, this is 1, 1 only, correct. Next, 1, 1 is it equal to 2, 0, I should tell. That's about it. If this condition is true, return true. Right, as you can clearly see, if this condition is true, return true. Else, return false. Else, return false. Is this clear to each and every one of you? I hope you have understood. 
Now let's check whether really this works. So I'll just come down. And uh, what I will do is uh, 0, 0, 1, 1. At 1, 1, please put x. Next, at uh, 2, 2, please put x. You can remove the, uh, okay, you can remove the other two conditions. You can remove it. Now, if in case, uh, I will change this from check row win to check uh, diagonal win. And if in case, I were to execute it, then clearly one can notice diagonally there is most certainly a win. If I have to show the other diagonal to you, I will just make, drag it a little, keep the console, drag it a little aside. Maximize, bring back the console, drag it a little aside. Yeah. Now I'm going to uh, change it here, watch it. Now, uh, if in case I go here and uh, make this as 0, uh, 2. Next, I'm going to make it as uh, maybe 0, 2. Okay, that's fine. Uh, change it fully. 0, 2. Then next, make it as uh, 1, 1, 2, 0. Correct. If in case I were to execute. Even in this case, the answer is a true. Understood? So, I think everybody has understood. Scroll on top. Maximize all three methods. Check column win method is clear to you. Check row win method is clear to you. Check diagonal win method is clear to you. However, there is something interesting here which I want all of you to observe. If I just scroll down, if I were to scroll down here, what I will do is uh, remove all this. Remove one of the display board. Because just anyways, the board is empty. I have not placed anything. Now, I have not placed anything, right? Comment this line because I do not want it to execute. Now, if in case I were to just execute, clearly you can notice this is the empty board. Has anyone won here? No. Now, I will uncomment the diagonal win. I will now execute it. If I execute, oh, it tells true. Yes, somebody has won. Okay. Next line, I will call the row win. Sys out, check row win, t dot, check row win, check row win. If in case I were to execute it, clearly one can notice true. So it is saying row wise also people have one. Next, I will check column win also. Sys out, t dot, check column win. And if in case I do this, and if in case I were to execute, clearly one can notice, you can see it's saying, yes, column wise also people have one. And it is correctly telling the output because of the way you have written the logic. What is your logic to check for a diagonal? This character should be equal to this character. This character should be equal to this character. What is this character reference? Empty character. Is empty character equal to empty character? Yes. Is this empty character equal to this empty character? Yes, so true. Now think about row win. Empty character is equal to empty character. Empty character is equal to empty character. So true. What is wrong in it saying? Next column win. See empty character is equal to empty character. Empty character is equal to empty character. So obviously column wise also the logic is saying true because empty character it is comparing because initially what have you put in the board? Empty characters. Which means scroll on top. Slight change should happen in our logic. Let's start with column win. First, before you check whether this character is equal to the next character and that next character is equal to the next character, first you need to ensure that the first character you are checking is not empty. The first character you are checking is not empty. And what is the first character you are checking? This one. So what I will do is copy this. This is the first character you are checking. Copy this. Come to the left side of that. Leave some space and come there, paste it. I will paste it and I will check if this is not equal to empty character. Only if it is not equal to empty character, then I will check this condition. So I will put an and. However, I will understand. So it should not, the first character should not be empty. And then that first character should be equal to the second character. Second character should be equal to the third character. Only then it will work. Yes or no? Similarly, copy this empty character. Same thing for row win. 
before i start checking one by one one by one first i will go here and i will check that is the first character empty but here see first character is i0 so i will put i0 first character should not be empty and then if it is not empty either it will be x or a o so check if x is equal to the next character is x then the next two characters are x or are the characters o but it should never be empty so first character you are checking is always i0 everyone understand row 0 0 1 0 2 0 whatever first character should not be empty similarly diagonal wise also boss listen here i will come now diagonally if you have to speak this is the first character diagonally which should not be empty that way this also is the first character diagonally which should not be empty which means 0 0 also should not be empty 0 2 also should not be empty correct which means observe carefully first i will come here and here i will tell board of 0 0 board of 0 0 should not be equal to empty and and then i will check similarly or or for the next diagonal also this first character should not be empty so board of 0 2 should not be empty board of 0 2 should not be empty did everybody understand why checking for empty is very very important now if in case i were to scroll down now if in case i were to execute clearly one can notice false 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 i hope you're able to understand and it gives true in the right uh, scenarios that we have already checked but this was one empty condition which we had to add and i hope all of you agree with me logically that we have to check whether the first character is empty or not otherwise our entire logic fails anyways this is it from my side for the part one of the project. I want everybody to create your project files, code till here, experiment with your code, make some changes and keep it ready. And I'm going to meet you in the second part. Thank you so much.